Hey you guys, it's Carolyn from Homesteading Family and today I'm really excited to share with you how to make homemade butter from your raw cream. Look at the color of this homemade butter. It almost looks like cheese. It is so amazing. But if you've ever worked with raw cream before, you'll know that there are a lot of nuances to getting butter that turns out just right and stores well in your fridge while still tasting great. So I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks today. All right, now when you're making homemade butter from raw cream, or even if you're using store-bought heavy cream, there are some things that you need to be aware of in order to get your butter just right and to make it not take long to turn into butter. Now, butter making changes throughout the season, especially if you're dealing with raw milk that is coming straight off of your own farm, dairy animal, or from a local farmer. The reason for this is that as the seasons change, as the food changes that the cow's eating, the milk and the cream changes also. That means at one point of the season, making butter can take five minutes, and another part of the season, you can really struggle to ever get your cream to turn into butter. Butter. Um, it's just really important to remember that when you're working with these live things straight out of the animal, you're really needing to work with the seasons. And it's very different than just buying a homogenized, you know, very produced um, and carefully created product that comes from a box in the grocery store. So you're going to have to have a little bit of patience and a little bit of flexibility when you're making butter from raw cream. Now, the important things to know is that there's three aspects to getting your raw cream to turn into butter successfully and quickly. That's right, these things can make a real difference. You can take either a short amount of time making butter or you can take a really long amount of time to make butter with the same cream depending on your technique. Now the first of those things is temperature. Your cream should ideally be at about 62 to 63 degrees when you start trying to turn it into butter. This is super, super important because if it is off, if it is too cold, it can take much, much longer. If it's too warm, the butter that you're going to produce is going to have kind of a melty, slimy quality to it that's hard to recover, and you really don't want that. So you want to aim at starting at about 62 degrees. That means that your cream needs to come out of the refrigerator and come up to temperature. This takes several hours. If you have a cool kitchen, the best way to do that is just to pull it out the night before and let it sit to come up to temperature overnight. Now you have to be careful because again, you don't want it to go too high and anything above 65 is really too high to make good quality butter. Now, the second thing that you need to think about for your cream is culturing it. Sweet cream does not make butter as easily as a slightly cultured cream. So there are a few ways to go about this. You could leave your cream out longer and let it naturally start to ferment over a day or two and have a slight sour cream. Or the easier way to do this while controlling the flavors is to put a little bit of a starter liquid into it. The ideal being a live buttermilk. Just about a teaspoon of a live buttermilk put into your cream, even while it's cool, the night before you, as you're taking this out of the refrigerator or just the few hours before, can give it just enough culture to not really change the flavor very much, but to help the butter turn into cream much better. Now that is exactly what I've done with this cream that's sitting right here. It has come up to temperature of about 62 degrees and it's had a little bit of buttermilk culture in it for the last about four hours. Um, the third thing that really affects butter turning in or cream turning into butter is the volume in the container that you're going to use to turn um, to churn your butter. 
I'm gonna be showing you three different ways to do butter today. We're gonna to just do the old fashioned method of shaking it in a jar. I'm gonna show you how to do it in the kitchen aid, which would go for any, um, really any kitchen appliance. You can do the same in a blender, you can do it in a food processor, I've done it in a Bosch mixer. The same thing really applies. So I'm gonna show you that, but then I'm also gonna show you a special butter churn, electric butter churn that I use because I can do a lot of butter really quickly in it. Um, so I'm gonna show you all those, but for every single type of machine or method that you use, it is very important that you never fill your container more than halfway filled with cream. This is so that it has room to expand, but it also has room to slosh. The sloshing movement of that cream is what's gonna turn it into butter. So it's really important that you never get over halfway full in any vessel at all. Okay, once you get those things, you're ready to actually start making butter. So we're gonna start here with the, um, with the jar. Now I have, you can see, I forgot that was in there. Um, I have the plastic lid, but I also have the metal lid on the inside of it because these plastic lids are not airtight. So you could just use the two part uh, ring on this. Today we have the plastic lid with the metal lid inside. Okay, and I'm gonna take my butter that's come up to temperature. Sorry, I'm gonna take my cream that's come up to temperature. And this is really full, so I'll try not to spill. Ooh, you can see how thick that is. It's already starting to thicken up a bit. If you left this cream long enough, it would start thickening even more at the top. So the longer you can leave your cream while it's still sweet, the better it's gonna be. Okay, now. I have my jar halfway filled and I have the lid on very tightly, otherwise this is gonna spray everywhere. And all you do to make this is just to shake. Now, this is a great thing to get your children involved in. In fact, mine love making butter this way, even though we make butter every single week in our other methods of doing it, they still enjoy this. One great way to do this is to start a jar and just pass it around the table during a meal time. Just let everybody take 30 seconds shaking and then pass it on to somebody else. If you have your temperature and your culture right, this can take as little as five minutes. Maybe as um, winter comes on and the cow's feed is changing, it can go up to 15 to maybe even 20 minutes. But you're gonna be, you know, it's always gonna be the shorter end of the spectrum if you have your temperature, your volume, and your culture just right. Okay, I'm gonna pass this on to a child to keep going here. Now we're gonna look at the KitchenAid. Now, the KitchenAid is a great way to go um, in the kitchen, most people have a stand-up mixer of some sort, and it can be really, really easy to use. I like to start with the wire whisk until we get to the whipped cream point, and then I go ahead and switch out to a paddle because those wire whisks are a little hard to clean when you get clumps of butter in them. So same thing on this. You're just gonna fill your container no more than halfway. And in fact, for something like a stand mixer, I would go to about the third mark instead of even halfway, just so that you don't end up with cream all over your counter. Now you see that that's not gonna hold a whole lot of cream. That was what, about, um, you know, less than two quarts, so about a quart and a half that I just got into here. So that's not gonna hold a whole lot of cream. That's great if you're just doing a small amount every week, but if you have gallons coming in like we do, you're gonna want a bigger option. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So we want to start this on low, take it to the whipped cream stage, and then we're gonna switch out those paddles. This is gonna be a little loud. Okay, so just in as an example, you can see how that gets started. I'll finish that up in just a moment here. But I want to introduce you before we start any more to this handy little machine. I'll put the link on where you can find this. Oh, thank you, I got caught up in cords. There we go. I'll put the link to where you can find this in the description. I am absolutely in love with this, and this is an electric butter churn. It's nice and quiet, and I can do um, a gallon and a half of cream at a time. So when you fill this up, it hits about the gallon and a half mark. Um, 
And this just really makes your butter making simple because I don't need to do multiple batches like I do in the KitchenAid. I can just do one big batch once or twice a week to use up all my cream and turn it into butter. But the process ex is exactly the same as everything else. You just take your cream and you're gonna put it into this. It has the nice agitator down here. We're gonna go ahead and put it right in. Of course, we're working with raw cream here. So if you watch my raw milk video, you're gonna know the importance of working very cleanly. So all of these uh, appliances, all of these utensils have been washed immediately before use even though they were clean when they were on the counter. We gave them another good wash because you always want to work extra cleanly when you're working with this good raw milk. Remember, raw milk and raw cream is very healthy as it comes out of the cow, but if you're not working cleanly, you can introduce contaminants that can cause problems. So just like everything else, whatever you're working with in your kitchen, you wanna work really cleanly. Wow, look at how thick this cream is right here. This is amazing. Okay, the thickest cream always rises to the top. So there's almost a layer of this super thick cream at the top. Of course, if you wanted, you could scoop that out to put over berries and have strawberries and cream right there. Oh, so delicious. Okay, so this is only about a gallon that I just put in here now, but it can hold up to about a gallon and a half. And then all you do is you screw the lid back on and then you plug it on in to get started. And you can see that's really turning and sloshing around. I love this machine. It's so much quieter than having a mixer running in your kitchen for any amount of time. And again, you can see how well it's handling this full gallon of cream does the same for that gallon and a half. All right, I'm gonna turn these machines on, let them work for a while, and we'll be back when we start forming butter. Okay, so this has been going for a couple of minutes now. We've also been working on the jar by hand. And you can see that at this point, we're kind of at the thin whipped cream stage. Right here, you know, another minute or two, and you could add some powdered sugar and vanilla and you'd have a delicious whipped cream right there. But of course, we're going past whipped cream, we're going for butter. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and um, switch this out and put the paddle on. Um, you can see that the jar itself, we've been shaking that, and that's actually moving along a little faster. That's really getting very close to turning to butter. It's like a thick, grainy whipped cream. So you can see that doing the jar can actually go a little faster, but of course you have way less in it. Now this over here is at that heavy whipped cream stage two, and so it's just humming along for having a gallon done, but I don't need to do anything different to it. I don't need to change anything. So I'm just gonna let it keep on working. Okay, turning it back on. All right, so this has been churning for a few more minutes here. And you can see that we've moved past the nice light whipped cream stage and now we're at a really heavy, um, this is almost like a really melted ice cream stage, but it's kind of grainy. You can see it's lost that smooth quality. So we're just a few minutes here away from the cream breaking or the butter coming is the old fashioned term for it. Um, and this is where all of a sudden you're gonna go from something that looks like one product, one homogenized cream that's kind of fluffy, to a, um, a thick yellow grain of butter floating in buttermilk, which is gonna be fairly clear to kind of whitish, maybe with a little bit of a bluish hint as we're pulling all the cream out of that buttermilk. We're pulling out all of the fats from that cream and we're gonna leave a very non-fat product that's gonna look kind of clear bluish, maybe a little greenish. Um, and that's gonna be true buttermilk. Now you can see in this jar that we've been shaking, it's just one stage further along. It's really grainy now. It's just about to completely break. 
and have just buttermilk and butter in there. This one is still moving along. It's a little bit hard to tell um, from looking at it how far along it is, but it's really close to the same stage as this one at this moment. Okay, back on. All right, so we have our three different methods of making butter here, and the first one to be done is the jar. We've been shaking this, and you can see that as that cream breaks, that buttermilk separates out and you end up with a lump of butter. Now, one of the major mistakes that beginning butter makers make is not to continue shaking long enough. When your butter starts to turn into butter and that it starts to separate out, it's kind of disorganized and all in just little tiny clumps. So you wanna keep shaking until you end up with one big clump. Or if it's in a mixer, you wanna keep going until it starts to clump together into larger clumps. Now you can see that we are very close in this mixer. So I'm gonna turn this back on, but you gotta make sure when you're dealing with something like a stand mixer to keep stopping and scraping down the side. Sides. Otherwise, you'll end up with a bunch of whipped cream at the top of your bowl, and you'll end up with butter and buttermilk in the bowl. And this one over here is a little bit further along. I'll pull this up so you can see how we're starting to get little bits of grains of butter on there. It's getting very close, but it's not there quite yet. Now, in a container like this, or even in the jar, um, it can be very challenging to know what's going on inside the jar without stopping and opening and looking. But you can be sure that when you actually turn to butter, the liquid is going to change substantially. You're gonna go from something that you can't see through that is very creamy to something that all of a sudden the jar gets completely clean and you can see into the jar. It's also gonna sound very different because you have a big solid lump in there with thin liquid rather than having that thick cream in there. Now, one thing that's important to notice is, um, or to note is that while one mistake people can make is to not keep shaking it or churning it long enough, another is to continue churning it way too long. That often happens if you're using something like a mixer and you walk away and you forget about it. And what can happen is that the buttermilk can actually um, the butter can be broken back up into the buttermilk and you can end up going past the nice chunk stage and into a place where you have a hard time getting your butter out of your buttermilk. So you do need to watch it closely when it starts to get to any of these stages right here. All right, now while these other machines are gonna have to keep working, um, I'm gonna show you how to handle your butter and your buttermilk. Now the first stage to getting a usable butter is to separate out that buttermilk. Now this is really important for the sake of your butter. We're gonna talk about that in a moment, but first let's talk about this buttermilk. This buttermilk is not what you would go to the store and buy listed as buttermilk. That is a cultured milk product and often it has the whole milk fat in it, meaning that it's much thicker and it's usually made from a whole milk, not from an actual butter milk that comes as the process, the byproduct of making butter. Um, so this is gonna have a different flavor to it than what you would be used to if you drink buttermilk from the store. That said, this is a very, very useful product. Some people like drinking it plain. Some of my children like buttermilk like this. Um, but it's wonderful in baking. It's a wonderful product in baking. So make sure you save your buttermilk. Uh, if your kids don't wanna drink it, if you don't wanna drink it, put it in some baking. And if you don't have any baking you're getting done, then generally the animals will love getting a treat of some buttermilk. Okay, so now we have butter that has little bits of buttermilk in it. I wanna point out right now that that a uh, pint of cream has made us probably about maybe a cup of butter. That's gonna be half a pound of butter that that just made. And you know, that's a pretty good return. Um, it's very hard to calculate how much butter you're gonna get out of a cream because that's gonna change seasonally along with that cow's feed, just like the cream changes. So sometimes it's gonna be a really high percentage, sometimes not so much. This is a pretty good percentage here. Right now though, this buttermilk is all mixed in to the butter. And 
the thing about buttermilk is as soon as you remove that butter from it and it turns into buttermilk, it goes bad rather quickly. It goes sour really quickly and it'll make all of your butter go sour too. So for the longevity of your butter, it's really, really important that you wash this butter. The best way I've found to do it is to go ahead and put it under a sink with running water and um, let you need to wash it while working the butter. Generally, I do it with my hands until that water runs completely clear. If you don't get that buttermilk out, your butter will go bad really quickly. Now, if you're planning on consuming this, you know, within the next few hours, you don't need to be too metic meticulous about it. You can just drain off that buttermilk and go ahead and eat your butter like that. But we're gonna go on up to the sink and take the next step. Okay, so now we have our butter and it has a little bit of that buttermilk still in it. So it's really important to get that buttermilk out of the butter, otherwise your butter's gonna go bad really quickly. Now, if you're gonna use this butter in about the next 24 hours, you don't need to worry about this step too much. You can just drain that buttermilk off. But if you wanna store it in your refrigerator or in your freezer for longer, you really need to wash this out very thoroughly so that your butter doesn't go bad. So we want to use room temperature water. This is really important. If you use cold water, your butter's gonna get so hard that it'll be very hard to wash all the buttermilk out of it. And if you use hot water, it will start to melt. So you really wanna go for about room temperature um, butter somewhere, uh, water somewhere in you know high 60s is kind of what you're looking for, mid to high 60s. And you're gonna wanna wash it out until it runs completely clear as you work with it. Now, historically, they would use wooden butter paddles, something that was kind of like this, a couple of them, and this just still has some cream on it. And they would work it without their hands so that their hands didn't heat the butter up. This was often because they didn't have a way to chill things very efficiently, especially their water. But make sure you have clean hands and I recommend just going ahead and using your hands. Now you can see as you start to work with it, it does start to get cloudy. That's because you're just gonna knead all the buttermilk out of that. Now this does take a minute or two to do properly and to get it completely clear, but this is one of the most important steps of butter making right here is properly washing your butter. Now in the old days, they would wash their butter very, very carefully and salt it down for a little bit of preservation sake. And then they could keep it out in a cool basement or a cellar of some sort. They didn't even refrigerate it. And this washing process was one of the keys to making sure that that butter lasted really well without refrigeration. Okay, now when you get your water all filled with buttermilk like that, you wanna dump it out and add in some clean water. Now this often takes about three changes of water, sometimes longer to get this. If you're working with a large amount of butter, it might take quite a bit. You can see we're getting really close to clear here already. So I'm just gonna do a little bit with this, dump that and do one final rinsing, make sure it's running pretty clear. And just continue working with it. If your butter starts to get a little soft because of your hands, you can always drop the temperature of your water just a little bit to help it maintain coolness. Okay, so we have a nice clear water there, very clean. So we're gonna drain that off really well. Okay, now the next step is to salt it. Okay, so now we have our butter and it's nice and clean, but we do still have a little bit of water coming out of it. So this is the next stage in getting your butter to last well. That's gonna be salting it and then draining it off. Now, when we're salting our butter, we're not just flavoring it, we're putting that salt in there because it's gonna help to draw off any extra liquid. It's those pockets of liquid that um, really just keep it 
from being nice in the refrigerator. Even if it's not going bad from the buttermilk, you don't wanna take your butter out and set it on the counter to soften and have a bunch of liquid come off of it. That's not a nice way to go. So we need to salt it, salt down our butter. Um, salt, the standard ratio for salt to butter has to do with how much cream you started with. For a gallon of cream, you would be using a teaspoon of salt. So for a half gallon of cream, you'd use a half teaspoon of salt. For a quart, you'd be using a quarter teaspoon. This was a pint that we started with, if you remember in that jar that we hand shook, so we'll only be using an eighth of a teaspoon. So I'm just gonna give it a nice little sprinkle for that eighth teaspoon. Now you don't want butter that tastes salty to the taste, but you want it to have a good flavor and have enough salt in there to draw that liquid out. Um, you can use any salt that you normally use in your kitchen. You don't need to use any fancy or expensive cheese salts or anything like that. Now we're just gonna knead this in really well. Make sure it's really well mixed. As I'm doing that, there is liquid coming out. So I'm kind of trying to keep the butter out of that liquid. The faster we can get that butter drained, the sooner we can get it put up in the fridge or the freezer or wherever we're gonna keep it. Okay, so I have a little bit of liquid. I'm just gonna pour that off. And right now I'm gonna go ahead and kind of thin this out for just a few minutes. Just get it nice and thin. And I'm gonna let it sit here for just a few minutes to let the liquid pull out of it. I'm gonna go ahead and um, put a towel under one edge so that I can keep it tipped just a little bit to let that liquid drain off. About five minutes is really all you need for this process. And then you'll have a little pool of water on one side that we're gonna drain off. Okay, so the salt has pulled out a bit more liquid here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that off and we're ready to package our butter. Now, obviously, if you're gonna use this right away, you can just go ahead and put this um, into your fridge and uh, you know use it just as is. If you are going to use it within a few days, you're gonna to wanna to package it so that it's not exposed to all the air in your fridge for a long amount of time. So the best way that I found to do that is just with a little bit of plastic wrap. Now, generally, if I'm doing large amounts of butter, I weigh this and weigh out a half pound of butter in each package. A half pound of butter equals one cup of butter. And so it's really easy to know exactly how much you have in a package if you've weighed it. Um, so you just want to wrap this up nice and tight and it stacks better if it's in kind of a rectangular disc. It also defrosts more quickly if you have it in the freezer if it's in a thin disc. So I like to aim for a shape about like that. Now look at that beautiful butter, look at that color. That is all of those vitamins that you are not getting from store-bought butter that comes back white. This is the color that butter really should be, this or even more yellow in some cases. Now let's talk about storing this. This is gonna last just fine in your refrigerator for several weeks, but if you're wanting to store it longer than that, the best place to put it is in your freezer and it can store there for quite a long time, up to a year. Um, I tend to make large batches of butter and put them, what I'm gonna use for one week into the refrigerator, put the rest into the freezer, and then we store up in the freezer for winter when the cow is dry, use off of that, and then get back to fresh butter in the spring. Guys, if you haven't made fresh butter, I really, really recommend you try it. It is so delicious. It is such a different thing. It is, it's like luxury in your refrigerator rather than having the store-bought stuff, which just isn't quite the same. Try making your own, even if you just have to go to the grocery store and get some heavy cream and make it that way. But if you can get your hands on some fresh raw cream, this stuff is amazing. Take care, you guys.